The economy plays a key role in the progress of a nation by helping the society decide in the allocation of finite sources. Different sectors such as construction, manufacturing, agriculture, and fishing are part of the sector. Some businesses, however, such as street food, RTW, and produce stands belong to the informal sector. In this video, the current state of the informal sector in Cagayan de Oro City will be discussed in three parts. First, the problem. Second, the studies. And third, the design prerogatives or design intervention. The problem. Cagayan de Oro is home to some 657,000 people, according to the 2015 census. In 2020, it would be safe to assume that the population would be nearing 1 million people. We see a city that is booming pre-COVID-19. Tourism is booming, infrastructure projects are built, malls and condos are sprouting from the ground, transforming the city's skyline into a highly urbanized one. It is good that we see a significant number of businesses entering the city. But what about those marginal people who don't have basic education? Those who come to Cagayan de Oro to find a greener pasture, per se. This is where the informal sector comes in. The number of people in the city is greatly increasing. According to XU's Kina Adman University Research Office, or Kuro, the rate of migration into the city had increased. 26% say that there is not enough livelihood programs, and 23% said that there are not enough available jobs within the city. The implication of this is that more jobless people in the city means that there is a high chance of people settling to venture into the informal economy, hence the birth of the street vendors. In the city, there are two identified hotspots for street vendors. First is the Plaza de Visoria, which is a student magnet zone. Second is the Cogon Market, where middle income and below average income earners shop. Issues arise when these vendors have no allotted area for doing businesses, in most cases due to the lack of government support. In the previous years, the local government had offered areas to these ambulant vendors such as Gaston Park and Captain Vicente Roa Street near Ayala, but vendors still preferred near schools and markets due to higher foot traffic. Street congestion and improper food handling are major issues. Therefore, a proper area for these vendors to situate in is a must. Studies There are five major data in this study. First is the number of street vendors. Second, the peak hours. Third, the flow of delivery, fourth, waste management, and the fifth is the hydroponics. According to the gathered data from DTI, 111 RTW shops are registered in Cagayan de Oro. In a follow-up interview with a CEED head, the number of street vendors is approximately at 600 in 2017. Here's how we arrive at that approximation. Next is the peak hours for RTW shops, street food vendors, and produce vendors. This part of the study is important as it will be the basis for zoning. The data shows for RTW shops, the average peak hour is at 5.30 in the evening. 
For produce sellers, there are two identified main peak hours. First is 4 in the morning, second is 6 in the evening. Lastly, for street food vendors, the peak hour is at 5 p.m. Third is the flow of deliveries. The table shows the average number of trucks that deliver in one day. The total is five trucks. For RTWs, one trash bag times 111 is equal to 111 trash bags. For produce and food vendors, 600 street vendors divided by 6 trash bags is equal to 100. A total of 211 trash bags per day are produced. Lastly, the hydroponic garden. The data shows how produce thrives in a hydroponic gardening system in a tropical climate. For this project, the NFT or the nutrient film system is picked. The facilities needed, germination area, storage, and water reservoir. Equipment, water pump, PVC pipes, air pump, grow tray, water thermometer, TDS meter, net pots, foam, pump timer, shade net, water filter, and timer. We are down to the last part of this video. Design Intervention The Site In the site selection process, the researcher sets a criteria that would fit the project. For the location, location is preferably away from the city center to avoid additional congestion, which is a chronic issue. The location should feature a view, seascape, to attract the market niche and business owners. The project must be located in areas near institutions such as hospitals and schools. Also, it is desirable to have nearby gasoline stations and convenience stores due to both having low-income employees or the main component of the target niche. External A desirable area has a low flood susceptibility, 0.5 meters high but relatively moderate flood susceptibility, 0.5 meters to 1 meter high, is acceptable, as long as there are design preventive measures. The location must be away from landslide-prone areas, especially that the proposed project is a vertical building. Access Easy road access is a must to have an efficient inflow and outflow of mobile elements needed for building function. Site Analysis after the site selection process, a thorough analysis of the site is done. From a macro perspective, there are establishments that are near to the site. These will be beneficial to the stability of the building. Looking into a more specific analysis, zoning of the area has three parts. The public area, the building area, and the admin area. The public area is ideal for public use due to the colder breeze of air. In addition, it takes advantage of the view of the sea. Building area. The spot is ideal for the building as it is buffered from the source of noise and carbon emission. Admin. Admin office should be protected from potential break-ins. In this area, there is limited access from the highway and adjacent establishments, given that a perimeter fence are built around the property. Surrounding factors such as sources of noise pollution, carbon emission, potential views, prevailing winds, and sun orientation are also identified. The Site Development Plan the site development stage shows the road networks created for the project. Additionally, installed fire hydrants, 
light poles, bollards, jockey pump, pedestrian crossings, bike lanes, the playground area, PWD ramps, PUJ stop can be seen in the drawing. Design concept Elevating dining and shopping experience through the application of curvatures and passive design strategies. Design philosophy Sense of oneness with nature defines the quality of lifestyle. Design objectives Number 1. To form an environment that is lush in greeneries and that limits vehicular access to prevent carbon emission pollution within the area. 2. To design a plan that adheres to an open plan concept valuing non-public areas. To create a direct and economic facade that appeals to the user's perspective. Design considerations BP-344 PD-1096 RA-9514 RA-6541 PD-1856 Vegetation, noise and carbon pollution, views and vistas, orientation, ventilation, lighting, passive design strategy, economic factors.